Hello everyone, happy Sunday and happy Father's Day. Today I'm wearing my dad's old uh, United States Air Force Academy t-shirt. It fits me kind of awkwardly, because my dad was um, a little bit of a muscle head, and I am not. But um, yeah, happy Father's Day. And uh, today's a vlogging day, and we're gonna be making some food for the week, and stamping some Lumi boxes, talking about uh, some samples that I got in the mail that I wanted, a new company I wanted to tell you about. Um, some samples I got in the mail from this super sweet company. And yeah, we'll see how the rest goes. For a meal prep session, you know, you're, okay, the goal is to make food for lunch for the week. And you would think that um, the best thing to do would be to just make as much food as possible. Well, you'd be wrong because the food goes bad, all right? So that's obviously one of the things, one of the issues that you're running into. Now, something that at first I really had a hard time calculating taking account for is the fact that sometimes you might have to go out to lunch let's say it's there's a staff lunch or someone's birthday or you're taking out a volunteer out to lunch so I think making around five to six meals um, that that seems to work now one of the other things that you run into is um, you get tired of the food that you made right so maybe uh, if you just think like okay I'll just buy like six chicken breasts and cook six chicken breasts I get a little tired of that food you know I don't want to eat the same thing every single day sometimes these these like meal prep meals um, I might substitute it for dinner right so I don't want to eat chicken breast for lunch and chicken breast for dinner um, so I'll, I'll, I'll substitute something so I normally shoot for two main meats two main meat foods and uh, and then I, I make make maybe like two to three uh, side vegetable type items. Because you're, because you're meal prepping for the week, you don't wanna go with any items that, um, oh gosh, wear your seatbelts, kids. Because you're uh, meal prepping, you don't wanna go with vegetables that um, go bad very quickly. And, and so to encourage myself to actually eat the food that I've made, I, I'm okay, you know, you know, splurging a little bit for some extra bacon or um, you know putting a little putting a little extra pizzazz in the food so that I'm excited to eat it and I'm not I'm not going out to eat because going out to eat is expensive and I work for the church and um, you know I can't, I can't I can't do that And there we go, we now have all the food. All the food we need. All right, let's talk vegetables. I try to use tin foil. This is like, I don't know, maybe everyone knows this, but I try to use tin foil as much as possible and use the oven with all the vegetables because it's just easier to clean up and I'm worried about making a lot of food very quickly with not, not that much time needed. So you put tin foil on the, um, on the old pan here, put it in the oven. Now here's a huge, huge tip. Bacon, okay? Huge tip, all right? So bacon can be really messy. It's essential to life. It's an essential ingredient to life, but can be really messy doing it in the pan. So here's the bacon method. You can look this up. 400 degrees, cold oven, 20 minutes. It makes perfect bacon. You don't have to worry about messing up the pan or anything. You just do like, just cook all the bacon. Just cook it all at once. You can refrigerate bacon uh, and it will keep for a long time. It will keep for a long, you can also freeze bacon, cooked bacon. Yeah, I like to cook a bunch of bacon ahead of time and just keep a package in, in the 
in the kitchen for or in the fridge for uh, for breakfast and stuff like that. So let's talk storage. How are you going to store this food? Well, I found uh, these little microwavable stackable containers on Amazon, and they are amazing. You can microwave in them. They come with lids on top. You can get them both like single serving and um, divided. You know, like big meal side right there. Um, these are amazing. They're super cheap. I'll put a link in the description. And uh, yeah, you can just make all of your serving foods. You just pop these in the microwave um, at work. And they're great. I realized i um, kind of out of these. So I'm just going to use a big container. Just going to use a huge container for now until I can get some more of those smaller containers. So I want to give a big shout out to St. Drogo Coffee. They're an amazing little coffee roasting company that just started up, and um, the the owner's Catholic. He's awesome. They're from uh, Bay City, Michigan. Am I? Am I is Michigan, right? Yeah, Bay City, Michigan. They're in some really old vintage building where they roast all of their coffee, and they sent me some of this coffee, and it is good. It is very good. It is very fresh. Look at that in there. Wonderful little coffee company. So. Check them out. They wrote an awesome letter. Chris Tanner at St. Drogo Coffee. Thanks so much, man. Um, look forward to working with you a little bit more in the future. Sunflower oil. This is uh, something my wife has got me on. This whole sunflower thing instead of just regular olive oil. Listen, I, I don't mess around with peppers, man. Okay? You just take the pepper. This is what you do, right? You just take the pepper. You just punch it down the middle there, tear it open, rip out the guts, you know, just kind of rip out the guts, boom, done. Shake the seeds out, done with the pepper. You know, people often ask me, you know, they'll say, they'll say, hey, Edmund, how do you stay so thin, attractive, shiny, you know? How do you stay so smart, physically fit? I just tell them, water, baby. Drink more water. Oh my gosh, and avocados. When you're on this slow carb diet, avocados, are the best. Um, because you're not eating as many processed foods, you're not eating as many like trans fats or fats that you would get from like chip, devil dog, twinkie, cook, oreos, donut, any of those things, um, you still need fat. Fat is good. Look it up. Um, so that's where, you know, you're getting some fats from, you know, maybe if you're having bacon or sausage or if you're eating the skin on chicken and stuff like that. But you need, uh, oh, with olive oil. Olive oil is a good place to get some good fats. Um, avocados are amazing place to get fats. They're a superfood. Um, nuts is another good place to get fat. Look, I'm I'm no expert, okay? Um, I'm just telling you what, what I do. You can follow it if you want. I mean, I'm, I'm not an extremely buff guy, and I don't have a six pack yet. It's coming. But man, when I eat this way, when I'm really, re really disciplined about eating this way, I feel good. I feel really good. And um, I can get through my day a lot easier. Um, I don't have as much of the like brain fog after lunch or around two or three. Don't drink as much coffee. Yeah, I just feel really good and I get to eat whenever I want. Um, as much as I want. Don't have to count calories or any of that crap. I'll try to find an old picture of me, but like there was one point where I was just eating pizza like nonstop. I would make pizza. I would make my own pizza. And I realized I was eating too much pizza when I realized that that in any other situation if you told someone, "Hey, I'm going I'm going to buy four large bags of shredded cheese and eat all of them in one sitting." You know, someone would say, "That's that's that's not healthy. You shouldn't do that." Uh, but for some reason when I put it on pizza, when I put it on bread with some pasta sauce or some pizza sauce, um, for some reason I felt I thought that was okay. I gained a ton of weight, felt bad, felt crappy, started eating like this, and uh, felt great. Lost the weight, 
Uh, and now I'm more successful. Um, I'm shinier. Um, yeah, ever since ever since I ate that way, um, people like me. You know, it's not true. No, that's true. I just feel better. Okay. Look at this. I should have known. One of the rules of cooking is never have a white shirt. I'm sorry, Dad. I just ruined the shirt. I probably made way too much food. I know I said I'm gonna have to make more than one entree, but I got this like crail thing going on, sausage and shrimp, and um. Gonna make the rest of the chicken later. Um, yeah, I got a few other things I need to do, so. That's it for now. Let me know how you do lunch. How do you, how do you prep for lunch for the week? Um, that's it, get out of here. So, that's it. That was, it was nice, it was fun. Talk to you guys later.